A couple of months back, I reviewed the Books Note Air 3C. It's a really, really nice color e-ink device, and honestly, since I reviewed it, my wife kind of stole it, and she has been using it a ton. She's really enjoyed reading some books on it. It's a pretty darn cool device, guys. And honestly, from the stylus, the pen, note-taking experience, to the fact that you can install just whatever Android app you want on it, it has been one of the more fun devices I've reviewed over the last maybe years. I really enjoyed reviewing this, and that's why when they reached out and they said, hey, we've got something interesting to show you. Tech is fun. Small tech for me is even more fun because it just gets a little bit more interesting. We have something coming to Go Color 7. It's going to be quite small, very similar to this thing, but smaller. They wanted to know if I wanted to take a look at it and give it a review. And I said, absolutely, send it my way. And today, which is delivered, we're going to open it up and start that review process. So it looks like I have two things here, actually. Some sort of a cover, which is really cool. And then the Go series itself. Guys, it is really, really small. It's actually a lot smaller than I was expecting it to be. Let's open up the little case cover thing first, because I'm remembering correctly last time, I spent forever looking at the tablet and then forgot that the case cover thing existed. So let's try to prevent that by getting it out of the way now. Looks like we're going to have the very same sort of design as we have with the big one, which is going to be, yes, magnetic. It feels quite good, nice and soft on the inside. I like it. But of course, this is the main event, the main attraction. Let's slide this out of here and probably have a lift off. The old double box, the box within a box situation here it is guys it is so much smaller than i expected it to be i know they said it was seven inches and i guess i could have just pictured that in my head correctly but for whatever reason i just didn't expect it to be that small usb a to c this is like a sim removal tray but i'm guessing it's probably for like an sd card or something like that removing the plastic and i'm immediately noticing it's textured back here I don't know how I feel about that actually. That's kind of an odd, rough sensation. I, I don't know that I don't know that I'm in favor of that. Luckily, you're gonna have this thing. Would you set it in here like that, perhaps? Yep, that seems like that works. And there is your ebook reader. So we're just gonna leave it in that so that I don't have to touch that texture on the back. Let's go around the device. So we do have probably if we can focus there, a power button there on the top side that looks like nothing, other side nothing, bottom side we have that little SD card, a, a couple of speakers, and then USB-C. Let's actually just go ahead and pop that out of there so that we know that we know. Yeah, definitely too big to be a SIM tray, so we're going to assume that is for micro SD. Let's go ahead and hold down this power button and we will power the thing up. One thing I want to quickly point out to you is that while it was sitting there off, you do have something on the screen. And that is confusing for people that aren't familiar with e-ink displays, but how that works is it takes no power to leave something on the screen on that display. And that is just a really cool feature of these devices. You may also notice that this is a color e-ink screen, which is also very, very cool. And of course, as we are going through the setup, it is a touch screen in case you maybe didn't realize. Very similar setup process to the Air 3C. You have the option of using bottom gestures or a navigation bar either way you want to go. And you can actually choose several different versions of this navigation bar. We'll leave it on the gestures for now because that's how it came. On these, pay special note that you actually have to enable these. So the swipe up and down gesture to change your volume, that is turned on. The swipe left or right to go back. We're going to turn that on. That's something that I actually missed with the Air 3C and I had to go back and actually figure out how to enable it. Now, one thing that is different is we don't have that sidebar on the side like we did on the 3C. It's a smaller screen, so they've kind of shrunk things down. We have our little navigation ball down here, which I'm probably going to turn off again. I just don't really see the need for that. Navi ball, you are gone. You can see Control Center down on the right side and then your notifications from the top, very much like Android. If we jump into applications, we have a little app drawer. And yes, the Google Play Store is right there. We have an app optimization tutorial, the refresh mode, normal speed, and then A2. We can see, so under normal, good display effect, suitable for general text reading, slight ghosting, suitable for quickly skimming through images and text, and then A2, slightly heavier ghosting, suitable for quickly scrolling through images and text. We're just going to leave it on speed. Some other things here, changing the DPI, some other enhancements of the colors. We're just going to kind of leave this alone for now. 
and simply fire up the Google Play Store and we'll get signed in. All right, Wi-Fi enabled, signed in. We have the Google Play Store and this is effectively just a tiny little Android tablet that does have an e-ink screen. So what does that mean? Well, whatever book application you can use or that you do use, you can install here. So if you use Google Play Books, guess what? You can go ahead and just install that. Now, of course, while that's installing, let's go home and I'll show you something else. So under library, you can just put books in different formats actually on this device. You can tell it where those are going to be. They do have their own store, which is fairly limited. I will say that is definitely the case. It seems like it's a lot of sort of open source sorts of things. You're not going to see like brand new books on here. They kind of expect for you to use different applications. And then there's a little file browser here for storage where you can kind of browse around things. But by and large, yeah, they're expecting you to sort of use their different applications. I do see an AI assistant there, which we're definitely going to want to look at here in just a moment. But let's fire up Playbooks first and I'll show you how that works. And we'll jump into a comic book first here in Google Playbooks because that's where I think that this thing is going to absolutely shine. There's just something about the way that comics look on this thing that is just awesome. It really does give this appearance, this look, like you are actually reading a real comic book. It's difficult to explain. I hope that it shows up on this video, but it just looks fantastic. Now, you might be able to see some ghosting going on there, right? So there's just a little bit of ghosting there in the image, which is kind of difficult to get rid of when it comes to an e-ink screen. This should be black, and obviously it is not. Now, there are meant to actually be several ways to sort of combat that ghosting problem, but for whatever reason, I didn't see a whole lot of a change when trying to implement them. So you can pull up your e-ink center and change it to that faster refresh mode, but again, the ghosting was still mostly there. There's another option in the system settings that will allow you to change the frequency with which the full screen will do a refresh. So by default, it's every 10 taps. So after 10 taps, everything gets wiped and it fully refreshes. I tried changing it to five, but for some reason in Google Play Books, it was just never automatically refreshing. So what I would recommend potentially if this gets on your nerves is jump into your gesture settings and switch to the bottom navigation. From there, anytime the ghosting starts to really annoy you, you can simply click on this little refresh button on the bottom right hand corner and it will manually do a full screen refresh. If you jump into a normal book, obviously it's going to be, you know, fairly straightforward. That's what it's going to look like. And the ghosting stuff, I don't think will be too big of a problem with this. In fact, I'm not really seeing any of that at all. If we rotate it, we should be able to rotate it. Let's turn auto rotation on. We should be able to rotate now and hopefully get a dual page layout in the Google Play books. There we go. So if you want to have sort of a two-page look sideways, you can absolutely do that. And it should revert back to one page. Yeah, that's really quite good. Another place where this thing is going to have a wild advantage over trying to read on your phone is the fact that it's an e-ink screen. What does that mean? Well, if we're outside in direct sunlight, that's not going to affect you literally at all. In fact, it's going to make the reading experience potentially even better Something that, of course, all these e-ink screens have, but it is worth pointing out because every time I see it, it kind of makes me happy. And something that I actually did not even realize this thing had for a while is this front light option. That's right, guys. This thing is backlit. Want to see proof? Watch this. Gone. So we saw that AI app, AI Assistant. We got to figure out what that is. What is going on here? This has an address at the top that is GPT-3. Is this just like, is this chat GPT? <laughs> What's going on here? It kind of looks like the chat GPT app. We need to log in, I guess. All right, we'll see what this thing's able to come up with. I believe this is being powered by chat GPT. The book's Go Color 7 is an e-reader tablet with a 7.8 inch. Uh, yeah, um, they, I, don't, I don't know why you necessarily need this. Let's refresh that and get rid of the ghost name, make it look a little bit better. Uh, but it's there, I guess, for some... <laughs> <laughs> put AI in everything, I guess. Just simply because I absolutely have to. We've installed YouTube on here and we're going to fire up a video. I just want you to see what kind of like media consumption. The volume does not appear to be functional. 
the volume that by swiping down over here is working, but that one's not. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but whatever. You can see, you're not going to be watching a lot of content on here. We are on the fastest refresh rate. There's this regal thing. That certainly is not going to work. That's actually quite terrible. Yeah, you're not going to be like watching video content on here. Technically, you can, but it's not going to be great. The next thing that I want to use this for, though, is I want to try to play something that will give you like an idea of what kind of speakers you're dealing with. We'll just play this track here. We'll turn it up. I mean, it, it functions. The speakers do work, but they are definitely not a set of speakers that I would be like, you know, bragging about. Basically, they're functional. And if you're doing like an audio book or something like that, they're going to work absolutely fine. But again, this isn't a multimedia consuming device. This is for books. And I think that's actually a good thing. We all, of course, have phones that are more than capable of reading a book. And some of us have phones that are really capable of reading a book. But the problem is with those phones, they're distracting. There's so many things on them to do. And they're, they're so good at so many things. You may get distracted from reading your book. This is not really going to be the case here with this device just because I thought it might make the book reading community absolutely cringe. Here's TikTok running on this thing. You can do it. You probably shouldn't though. And to kind of fully hammer home that this device is for reading books, if you pull up CPU-Z, you'll see this thing is actually running the Snapdragon 665. Now, good news is that's the same one that you had in the other one that I reviewed, the Air 3C. The bad news is it's a processor from 2019, and it is not particularly fast. So again, it's for reading books. It can do that, and it's great at doing that. But with this screen, with those internals, it's not going to be great for a whole lot else. It does have four gigs of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, and a 2300 milliamp hour battery. Now to talk about battery life, we need to actually jump into the future. So let's jump forward a couple days and see what kind of battery life we actually got out of this thing. All right, so through the power of editing, it is now a full 10 days later, and this thing has not been plugged in a single solitary time where you're sitting if you can see up there in the top corner, at 50% battery. Now, it's not been hammered necessarily, right? We've not used it a ton, ton, ton. But it has been used pretty much every day for somewhere between 30 minutes to an hour. The last few days, my wife has actually been taking it with her to work and reading on her lunch break. So somewhere 30, 40 minutes or something like that on these lunch breaks. And again, we've gone down to 50% battery. When I got it, it was at 93%. I think by the time I was done filming, we were somewhere in the upper 80s. So battery life, I think, is going to be extremely strong. Now, it is important to note that after 15 minutes, we're going to talk about this here in a second, after 15 minutes, it will shut itself fully down. And that's going to really help you know, get rid of any sort of standby drain you will be dealing with otherwise. Now, it's also important to note that somewhere after a few days, there was a firmware update for this that added a little bit that we can talk about in the settings. If we quickly jump into our settings, there are a couple of things that are worth noting. First off, you probably have a firmware update to install whenever you get this thing, and you should definitely do that because it does add a few things. I believe this was something that they added in after the update. It may be wrong, but it's something that's definitely worth talking about. So these side keys can actually be customized. So you can assign a short press function to each of them. So let's say you're in Google Play Books. Well, you can actually make these things do scrolling or page turn or change the volume. So by default, they're going to change the volume, but again, Per app now, you can actually have that change. You can also turn on a long press function. So let's say you want to bind that to rotating or going back. Full refresh could be a potentially cool one. We're using this button navigation down there so that we have access to that full refresh option. It's not clicked on something. Well, you could go to gestures and have one of these be assigned to the full refresh. It doesn't look like you can assign the button to a particular app though, which I think is a little bit of an oversight unless I'm just not seeing it. In your power settings, something that you may or may not want to use or something that can really help extend the battery life of this thing is the power off timeout. So by default, after 15 minutes, this thing will fully shut off. But of course, that is something that can be customized because it does take a little while to boot it up. So maybe you don't want that to be happening. You can choose here.
I do want to point out that I think after the firmware update, they changed the sort of app onboarding experience. When you launch your first app, it's going to give you this little menu talking about app optimization. And I think that that's been changed and improved just a little bit, which is good to see. The only real negative that I've run into is sort of a weird thing that my wife actually discovered. She was trying to purchase a book in Google Play Books. So when she went to go put in her password, it was doing this weird thing where the keyboard was flashing and it just wouldn't let you type. Some sort of incompatibility was rearing its ugly head there. After the firmware update, that has persisted. Now, of course, the workaround for this is pull out your phone, buy the book there, and then you read it here. So it's not a huge like deal breaker, but it is something I noticed, just a little issue with maybe the fit, finish, polish of the software. So overall, what is the verdict on the Books Go Color 7? I am actually really quite high on this device. Now, I do have the other Books device, which I really do like. It's got the stylus, it's much larger, but what's strange about these sorts of things, it's hard to predict, right? I would have thought I would have liked this one better simply because it was bigger, it's a larger canvas. But as it turns out, something of this size, which can be easily stowed away into a bag or something like that, it's much more comfortable to sit on the couch and read with. It turns out, this is actually a really enjoyable experience. And for a lot of you know scenarios, it is the more enjoyable experience to have. If you don't need the pen, if you don't intend on drawing on it, things like that, this might indeed be the way to go. As you can see here, $249 is the price for this thing. So it's not wildly expensive either, which is definitely good. It's not the most you know inexpensive book reading thing on the planet, but you, you know what I'm getting at. There will be an affiliate link in the description down below, by the way. If you click on that link and you make a purchase, it will help support the channel. So overall, like I said, I think that this thing is pretty darn solid. I do want to say thanks to uh, Books Onyx for sending it over for me to review. As usual, no money has changed hands for the production of this review, and they are seeing this review at the exact same time as everyone else. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer as many of them as I can in the comments down below, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.